along the roads like this. The surveyors will prepare the lots and get everything ready for the construction trucks. The workmen arrive and start building houses. To speed things up, I'll be skipping ahead in time throughout the video. Here come my new sims. Getting them into my town is easy. The trick is getting them to stay. All sims need two things, money and happiness. I'll start with the money first. Sims need jobs in order to make money. A simple way to create jobs is to build some factories. Factories also generate tax revenue, which will help me pay my city's bills. I zone for industrial just like I did for residential. I'm only going to zone a small area here because I don't want too many factories. They're pretty dirty and they won't help me attract tourists. Every sim in this game has a personal agenda. We can see what this sim's up to by clicking on him and following him around. Looks like this guy's anxious to get to his new job. Oh good, looks like he found one. I also need to keep my sims happy. Once they get their paychecks, they'll try to spend their hard-earned money to buy happiness. Unfortunately, my city doesn't have any stores yet. I'm going to fix that by placing some commercial zones along this main strip to make it easier for the sims to shop on their way to and from work. I want to zone for a lot of commercial buildings. Not only can my sims shop here, but the commercial buildings are also going to attract tourists, which will benefit the casinos I'm going to build later. You can see by this flashing red icon that the sims are asking for electricity. If I don't give them power, the city can't function properly. I'm going to take care of that by placing a wind power plant right over here. Wind power is great for a small town. It's cheap, it's clean, but unfortunately, it doesn't generate a large amount of electricity. As my town grows, I might need to build a bigger power plant or make a deal with a neighboring city to get some power. As the sun goes down and the first day comes to an end, you can see the building lights coming on now. By turning on the electricity data layer, you can actually see the power flowing along the roads. As the buildings receive power, the Zots disappear one by one, and now my city is ready for the night. Okay, the sun has come up and I'm ready to start a new day. Today I'm going to work on more of the basic infrastructure that will keep my sims healthy, happy, and productive. When my sims need something, they don't keep it a secret. This flashing icon tells me that my buildings aren't getting any water. Let me take care of that now by placing a water tower. Before I do that, I need to see how much water is available. This data layer gives me an x-ray view of the water table. The darker the blue, the more water is available to pump. There's a large amount of water over here, so this is a perfect spot for me to place the water tower. All buildings must be placed along roads. I don't expect too much traffic out here, so I'm going to draw a cheap two-lane road to the aquifer. The water flows along the roads just like power does. There's no need for me to construct a separate pipe network. Alright, looks like the water problem is solved. Whenever the sims use water, they immediately convert it into sewage. In this view, you can see that the sewage is starting to build up in the pipes. If I don't take care of this problem soon, it's going to get converted into ground pollution, which creates sickness and lowers the land value. The quickest and cheapest way for me to deal with this problem is just to dump it all into a corner of the town and hope that my sims don't notice. I'll draw a new road out into this forest and place my sewage pipe over here. Problem solved. In addition to sewage, sims will also generate garbage. My town is still young, so I don't have a garbage problem yet. But since I'm already polluting this corner of my town, I might as well place my dump here too. It's important to make sure that you keep your garbage and sewage away from your water supply. If the ground pollution gets into the pipes, your entire city could get sick. Garbage trucks will drive around town picking up garbage cans and dumpsters. When a truck gets full, it'll return to the dump and unload. Eventually, the dump is going to fill up, and then I'll either have to expand it or start burning the garbage. Uh, but that's a problem for another day. I also need to keep my city safe, and my casinos are going to attract a lot of criminals. I could wait until the crime becomes a problem, but it's usually smarter to be prepared ahead of time. Notice that the data layer is showing a green overlay on the streets that are more likely to be patrolled. Crime problems tend to occur in commercial areas, so I'll put my police station over here. There, I have all my basic services in place, and I'm generating a fair amount of money in taxes too. That was a productive day. Now that I have a solid foundation, it's time for me to start specializing in gambling. To save some time, I've jumped forward a few days. My city's a little bigger, and my population has grown. As I mentioned earlier, one of the new things you can do in SimCity is to create a big business. 
I'm ready to start building up my casino empire now. Casinos can generate large profits, but only if you can get enough tourists through the door. I can't immediately start building a fancy Las Vegas strip. Like everything else in SimCity, I'm going to have to earn it by starting small and then working my way up to greatness. Each casino caters to a different wealth class of tourist. These casinos cater to lower class, these to middle class, and these to upper class. I only have enough money to place this small gambling hall, but if I can make it profitable, then I'll be able to unlock bigger and more expensive casinos and attract wealthier tourists. Right now, I just need to focus on getting as many tourists into this casino as possible. The regional road will bring in some tourists, but not enough for me to guarantee a big profit. To increase the flow of tourists, I need to provide an alternative mode of transportation into this city. There are several options available to me. Since we already have rail running through the city, this is an easy decision for me to make. I'm going to go with trains. I'll place my train station here to provide tourists easy access to my gambling hall. Tourists will go to any commercial building in my city, but I want to encourage them to gamble, not spend their money on souvenirs and restaurants. Now, I need to connect my station up to the main rail line. This is similar to how I draw a road. And here comes my first train load of tourists now. Looks like my little gambling hall is a hit. I'm already making a profit, and things are looking good. My casino city is off to a good start but I still have a long way to go. That's one of the great things about SimCity. No matter how much you do, there's always new things to try. Thanks for watching. See you next time, and we'll take a closer look at multi-city play in the region.